Let's start with the term multiple sclerosis. The word multiple means more than one, and the word sclerosis means an abnormal hardening. An abnormal hardening of what used to be delicate, highly specialized and active nerve tissue, now replaced with sort of a scar tissue that doesn't convey the electrical signal that normal nerve tissue does. So why would this happen? If there's no infection, is the body poorly programmed to attack itself in these select areas? Or is something else going on? Is the system that's meant to protect and support the nerve system actually breaking down? Now remember there are many factors affecting our health, but what I want to explore now is the breakdown of the system inside the spine that's meant to protect healthy normal nerve function to keep you alive. Here's a picture that will help us understand what is going on in the bodies of our family and friends who are suffering with multiple sclerosis. And don't, un don't worry if you don't understand what you're looking at because I'm going to walk you through it. I've outlined the brain stem that's keeping us alive, activating the brain, activating the spinal cord to send nerves to the heart, lung, liver, everything. Next we have the cerebellum that is responsible for balance, memories, and a whole host of functions that we don't quite understand. And that's the thing about the nerve system. It's so complicated and so important. So we're just going to briefly run right through it. Next we have the spinal cord. This is where all the messages from the brain stem, cerebellum, and the brain come down and tell the body, organs, and cells how to stay alive. Now I want you to notice the white color that is surrounding the spinal cord. That's the spinal fluid that is supposed to bathe and protect the spinal cord and the brain. And you'll notice that there's a couple of bumps. They're right around discs in the spine because there's degeneration in, in the spine and degeneration can cause bone spurs, a disc protrusion, and start to close and press on and occlude the area that's meant for the spinal fluid and the spinal cord. Now I want you to notice something that's happening in this person. There are areas of demyelination and there are white areas in the normally gray cord on this image. We'll see an Im uh, a lesion in the brain stem at the top, a lesion right by C2, and then another longer lesion throughout the spine. And this is the demyelination of what used to be normally insulated nerves capable of conducting the messages that make our lives so enjoyable, interesting, and so forth. Now here are some video MRI images that I find very exciting. Now this technology is relatively new and that's probably why it looks uh, so crummy to you. But once again, I'm going to walk you through it. I'm going to outline the head, which is facing to the left. I've outlined the brain, which meets with the brain stem into the spinal cord. And now if I remove those lines, notice the black pulsations. This is showing that with every heartbeat, this fluid is flowing around the spinal cord and around the head. And in this example, it is unobstructed. It, unobstructed. It's doing its job to support and protect the spine. In this next image, we're going to see the results of spinal degeneration and spinal distortion. And this is why upper cervical doctors get so excited about we, what we do and put so much energy into educating people about what's going on in their bodies because you can't feel this. The problem with obstructed spinal fluid flow is it shows a breakdown in the system that's meant to protect the brain and spinal cord. So you can think of it as a damming up in a river or putting your thumb over a garden hose. The water behind the obstruction is going to build up pressure and on the other side there's going to be turbulent jets of water streaming out. Both can disrupt and damage very sensitive and delicate nerve tissue. I want you to think about how water wears away at hard rock and stone over time. And if there's interruption to the normal flow of fluid inside our spine, that can start to irritate soft, delicate nerve tissue. This irritation can possibly provoke inflammation and provoke an immune response that would be very damaging to the sensitive nerve tissue in that area. So just remember, there are many factors affecting your health, but spinal health is a key factor that helps keep us alive and able to work, thrive, live, play, and do all the things that make life worth living.